What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We have some things to go ahead and hash out today. So stick around and find out what they are because they may be important and it may help you out a little bit in the long run. Anyways, uh, also if you want to go ahead and support the channel, check out the link in the description. We're selling some NFTs, so check them out at the very least. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Bitcoin on the daily. Uh, we had that big massive move just a few days ago and we still have not confirmed a low. We need to go ahead and get a daily candle closure at least above yesterday's candle, right? Coming in at $47,419. We are talking about the very wick high of that. Um, I'm still looking for a move back up to about the $49,000 to $50,000 region, right around the spot 618 uh, Fibonacci, right around there. And we are on lower high watch, seeing as we have just confirmed another, uh, well, a lower low. Uh, this is not a downtrend just yet. You need to have two or yeah i guess a lower low and a lower high and we got one of those lower low we need a lower high um do i think that's what's really going to happen uh my personal opinion which i do not trade and this is a financial advice i'm not a financial advisor i don't think this is it you know we were very over leveraged as a market you go ahead and check out those uh, levels at cryptoquants.com that stuff is free and this is not a paid advertisement at all uh, I'm just trying to learn how to build a uh, trading system per the book I'm reading and they're a very helpful site for that information So you can go ahead and check out those relevant levels because anytime we get up to about 20% uh, leverage as a market whole That is typically when we see these very aggressive like liquidation um, You know corrections occur So very valuable information to go ahead and help you brace for um, another instance like that. But anyways lower highs. Yep. Boom over leveraged market got that um, yeah I don't think this is it you know that, that's what we were talking about my opinion on this I don't think this is it I think we probably just head up on up here but we got to be prepared for that lower high because this is a cautionary time right here since we did close below about forty six thousand dollars mm, anything else really to talk about no stokes are still nose diving and these daily stokes have been you know pretty much perfect since the start of this year all of 2021 Stokes have gotten every single turning point. If you want to know my settings for this, it's 14, 3, and 6 in that order. Uh, so pretty much everything but the last number changes. Um, yeah, and so once these bad boys flip back up to the sky, that's when we'll go ahead and talk about maybe a little bit more upside. But until that happens, we are, you know, in the threat of having a little bit more downside, especially since that low is not confirmed. Anyways, oh yeah, volatility is popping up. So expect the ranges to get wider, price action to move faster. Um, I expect this to kind of be a very decent expansionary phase. I'm looking for something more so along the lines of, let's see, where can I find something kind of like it? Mm, maybe something like this is honestly what I'm looking for. We have a nice uh, like few pops of volatility and then looking for that big, big move. So yeah, just that's what I'm really looking for. Um, RSI, we also have drive a bullish divergence or hidden bullish divergence uh, in the making. This is potential. This is not confirmed just yet. And so if that does get confirmed, I do think that sort of at least pumps us up to about 49,000. Usually with those, I target the first horizontal region and that would be 49K. Anyways, that kind of wraps it up on that. Let's go ahead and drop it down to a four hour. Four hours looking like accumulation and stokes are up and we have like two drives of bullish divergence regular not just uh, hidden. So your regular like divergences, uh, bullish and bearish are gonna be a lot stronger than your hidden types. So there you go. And I think that kind of gives us the juice to go ahead and pop back up. What would I be targeting for this? I'd probably target the 200 simple again if we do get a four hour closure above there. That's not target the perfect 55 and red 89 are around like $48,000. Mm, the ranges are gonna be a little bit more short or a little bit shorter due to the fact that we are on a shorter time frame. So, you know, the ranges adjust, you feel me? Anyways, as long as we're closing four hour candles above this low at around like $44,000, I really don't think anything is too bad right now. Uh, cautionary times, yep, boom, boom, boom. I think we kind of hit everything. Yeah, consolidation, it sucks, but that's kind of what happens when you red line over here. Um, I we're still expanding on four hour HVP. This is not over yet, so a lot more can still go ahead and happen. Usually what I'm looking for is this purple moving average. You probably can't see it too well right here, uh, seeing that red is the background, but I'm looking for this to kind of get up towards the like 96 percentile region as well, 96 to 100, and then I'm looking for that to go ahead and start to contract. 
And then that kind of wraps it up on the four hour. Let's go ahead and drop it down to Ethereum on the daily. Tomorrow we'll go ahead and talk about the CME closures because those are the most important closures since they close out their week sooner than price or spot price action. Uh, if we take a look at Ethereum, again, this is what's making me a little bit more bullish for the long term for Bitcoin. Uh, we still are making higher lows on altcoins, whereas Bitcoin is making lower lows, which is kind of weird. And like your altcoins aren't really getting too beat up during this move. Uh, typically, when a Bitcoin would experience a move like this, alts just get slaughtered, absolutely slaughtered. And everyone, well, not every one of them, but most of them are maintaining their structure, especially Ethereum, which is very odd. Again, though, there is a uh, caveat to this. We still have not confirmed a low on this, so it may look good, but it's not really that great until we confirm a low. That's what we're really looking for. And we need to go ahead and close something above at least... Uh, three thousand five hundred and sixty dollars right above that wick high or or just catch the uh, 10 exponential 10 exponential on a closing basis that would also go ahead and do it and i would target a move back up towards the prior highs honestly uh, um, let's see we're not on lower high watch for this so this is still good stokes are like exiting the overbought region or have done so i should say and so i'd be looking for honestly a consolidation phase um i'm not really expecting this to like go down too heavily though because well we're this anything above about like what three thousand uh, dollars uh thirty two hundred dollars it's just going to be a higher low in this so this is still good to me like we, we were playing with a very massive range on ethereum and we got a lot of room to play with that is why it's always important to be practicing great risk management uh if we do go ahead and head down where would i be looking for well if we go ahead and click take out $32,000 or $3,200, I would be looking for a move back down to the red 89, and I don't expect that to actually provide any bounce whatsoever, to be honest. I'd probably more so be looking towards the 200 simple coming in around like 2,500 bucks. Yeah, I think that's, yep, and let's go ahead and drop it down to a four hour and see what we got. Four hour, the four hours looking messy, very messy. Uh, compared to Bitcoin where it was looking actually quite orderly, but as long as we are above about uh, Again like thirty two hundred dollars on a closing basis All good. I, I don't really see a problem uh, It's looking like we may want to make a swipe towards the 200 simple again at around like three thousand three hundred forty five bucks um, Honestly, I, I would kind of expect it maybe uh, pop down around the lows one more time and then probably give a try to the upside Let's see, if we do go ahead and head up from here, we'd need a four hour closure above the red 89. And that would go ahead and probably start that move up to about the 786, right? Got to, got to double check my fibs where, geez, yeah, the 786 coming in at around about uh, $3,700. And then I'd like to see it from there. If we start closing four hours even above that, then again, prior highs is what we're going to be shooting for. But Stokes are pointing to the upside. A little shaky, a little shaky, but they're pointing to the upside nonetheless, and so I would be expecting more continuation on top of that. Oh, unless, they, unless they get a rejection from the bullish control zone, then um, it won't be looking too good. Anyways, I think that just wraps it up on Ethereum. Again, consolidation is the name of the game right now. Hold on, I'm getting a little thirsty, you feel me? All right, moving on to Telcoin. Looking like we want to go ahead and confirm a loan. It's kind of what we've been saying right here again. All these altcoins are pretty much what are making me so bullish on Bitcoin and making me think like this was just a move to go ahead and provide liquidity to the market. Uh, you know, the big players out here that you know, can move around that kind of money. So, um, yeah, like we tested the 200 simple, which we thought was going to be a very bouncy bounce region, seeing as it has kept up this market for the past like three months. And what I'd be looking for now is at least a move to the purple 55 or red 89 coming in at just above two cents. If we get a daily candle closure above the green 21, which is again, just slightly above that, I would be looking for a move back up to about two and a half cents. Again, I'm not really looking, I'm not really looking for a complete reversal just yet. We are in a short term downtrend on Telecoin uh, ever since 23 August. So that is something to go ahead and take into account. But we are getting to drive a hidden bullish divergence, which would probably precipitate that move to about uh, just over two cents. And daily stokes look like they want to cross up. This is unconfirmed though, so we need to go ahead and wait until tomorrow's closure uh, to get that confirmed. And then I'd get a little bit more bullish on this. Telecoin has been our canary in the coal mine, especially with its stokes. Uh, they weren't really too strong 
throughout the last rally, which was really making me a little uh, hesitant on the whole market, and rightfully so, apparently, because, well, we got like a $10,000 decline in Bitcoin. So, something to go ahead and look out for. This is still an unconfirmed low, though, I should say that. We, do go ahead, we need to go ahead and close a daily above pretty much around like two cents. If we get around two cents on a daily closure, that will go ahead and confirm this as a low. Uh, again, this is still a higher low in the macro scheme. If you go ahead and take a look at every other reaction we have had, uh, right around the 200 simple and 200 exponential. So we are still making higher lows in that, but the short-term trend is down on the daily. <clears throat> Anything else really? Uh, if we do go ahead and continue lower, I would be looking for a daily candle closure below the 200 exponential at just above one and a half cents uh, to go ahead and precipitate that move down. And I would go ahead and target the next horizontal just above one cent to go ahead and be the short-term target for that, maybe even over the long-term if that does occur, and move down to the 377, which is coming in at about a cent. Uh, I think that just about wraps it up. Let's go ahead and move on over to Ethereum Classic. Ooh, that sounded weird. All right, Ethereum Classic. Again, we're still making macro higher lows, and our last like really important low, you know, macro higher low, was well, around like $38. So we are playing with the big boy range right here and I'm on log. To, I knew something looked odd. But um, yeah, we got, we got loads of space to go ahead and move around here before I get like really like macro bearish, especially if you look at the weekly. Again, I think I pop it up every single time. We are still doing okay. This weekly has not closed yet and we still have a chance to go ahead and close, you know, and like keep this low formation. Um, so yeah, not really too, too worried about Ethereum Classic. We are in a deadly zone, I should say that, but higher term time frames are still looking just fine. And the daily is in a short term. Mm, um, no, it's not in a short term downturn just yet. I would be on lower high watch on this bad boy as well. Uh, short term target, if we do go ahead and get that move to the upside, is going to be around the 10 exponential and green 21, coming in around like 62 to $64 right around here. If we do get some daily candle closures above that, that's when I'd probably target this prior high at around like 73 bucks. Uh, so just be cautious. That's all I'm saying is just be cautious. A lot could go ahead and go wrong right here. And let's see if we go ahead and head lower, I would look for a daily count of closure below about the red 89 to go ahead and start that move down. And then I'd probably target right around the 200 exponential or this wick low coming in around like 48 bucks. So we were anywhere between about $45 and $48 would be my next target if we do go ahead and head lower, which is a very real possibility right here. Um, hmm. I think that just about wraps everything up. We talked about upside, downside, trend. That's it. That's all she wrote. Anyways, I'll go ahead and see you guys tomorrow. Tune in then. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you've been here for a minute. I'm up out of here.